Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, coast to coast. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Paul Tracy, race car driver's uh, in here tonight. Paul's going to be uh, racing down at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach uh, this coming Sunday. Nice to have you on the show, Paul. Back again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, let's see. What the, what the hell? We've had a lot of drivers on the show. What would you did you you raced it last year, right? Yeah. Did you win? No. What happened? I don't even remember. Good. <laughs> That's right. Put it behind yeah. you. <laughs> I'm right. good at forgetting the bad and good at remembering the good. Now the car, it, it, the cars. I was talking to a guy. I'm doing the uh, celebrity race. So I was talking to one of the guys from one of the teams who was prepping the cars. So they're all basically the same engine, about the same uh, horsepower, but the uh, the dialing in comes with the suspension and picking out the tires yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, the series has become you know more spec than it has in the past. They've gone to a one engine manufacturer in Ford Cosworth, uh, which is based right here in. In Torrance, California, where they they build and assemble the engines, uh, we have two car manufacturers. One is Raynard, one's Lola. We have one tire in Bridgestone, so the cars are Where's pretty Toyota much. All uh, they all they all pulled out. Where's all the, the Japanese manufacturers pulled out. Oh, well, they did. Yeah. How they get their keep their name on that thing? I don't know. Well, they've been the they've been the race sponsor for for a long time, so well, they continued. They make cars, that. therefore they put their name oh, on No, no, I'm keeping it real. I'm driving a Celica. You're right. Well, maybe that's the part that still remains Toyota. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. The, the part that the, the pussy celebrities drive. Oh, oh, how I dare you? I got, I got a whopping 183 horsepower under the hood. <laughs> how dare you, Drew? Front wheels burning out. Nothing. No, no, no exhilaration like the uh, feeling of the front wheels burning out. Nice. Drew. Yeah, that's exciting. That actually bothers me. I don't like that front wheel spinning stuff. There's an art to it. You don't have any front wheel drive no, cars, ours do you? No, rear, rear wheel. Yeah, but yeah. even your cars at home, right? No. You got a no rear wheel. You got a Porsche, right? <laughs> got a Porsche. You got a turbo got a, Porsche, right? I just got a SL 500. No, that's Ooh, a nice car. Yeah. The new engine, the Yeah. Uh, that's a nice car. You got the supercharged one? Yeah. Oh boy. Is that like the AMG? Yeah. Oh, it's but got I, like I sent I sent it up the road here to uh some friends of mine at CEC over on Santa Monica, and uh, you popped the, it up some more. With the supercharger or beyond the supercharger? Just bought some extra body kit and 20-inch wheels. And Jesus Christ. That's like a hundred and, uh, that car's like a hundred and thirty grand. Already. Yeah? Yeah. So racing's life, life been is good, good. <laughs> Yeah. Life is good. Well, you park that next to the Porsche. And yeah. what about that Porsche? You like you looking to unload that cheap now? No, I still got it. Yeah, yeah I like that car. I keep telling Drew to get some uh, a sports car. He wants to do it, but he's too big a puss. Yeah. Speaking of calling me a puss, Drew, how long have you been talking about getting a sports car? Uh, he's got, he's yeah. got some big wheels on the truck. Yeah, he's looking know. at that. Wait, this is Wednesday, uh, seven years. Seven years and nothing. Won't won't commit. Uh, we'll talk cars uh, during the break, uh, Paul. So I, I got some wheels myself. All you right. know. And you'll, you you'll, had the Jag last year. Oh, yeah. The supercharged Jag. Oh, yeah. See, Paul knows. He, <laughs> he's a car guy. He's got a good head for that. All right, uh, let's uh, talk to Jen, who's on uh, line five. Jen? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, the last couple of times my boyfriend and I have had sex, um, my clit has swelled up like really big. And I was just wondering what you think that could be. Uh, plain old irritation. Um, you know, just plain old, when you, yeah, if that, it's not, I've heard of that happening. It's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. And it's usually from some sort of inflammation. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not saying that it suddenly grew. It just gets swollen after well, after the fact. I don't know. I mean, it grows and it, like it swells, like it's huge. How big? Um. Big toe. <laughs> Second I'd toe. Say, I'd say it like doubled in size. And it stayed that way. Well, it went down a little bit. Like it happened tonight again, and it went down a little bit. But, um, like, I can tell, like, the day after, it's still, like, a little bit swell. And just, like, I just keep having sex. So it never, like, quite goes down. But All right. It's an inflammation. It's an irritation. The tissue, it's like any other tissue. It can swell up and get irritated. you got to ice it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's, a, there's such a thing as clitoromegaly where the thing can actually grow, and that's from hormones. If you're taking okay. male hormones, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think okay. I got that. 
No, 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 wait a minute. That's a penis. That's a penis. That is? Yes. All right, good. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was momentarily relieved there, Drew, and then upset. Yes. Then angered. So, Jen. Was it a finger with a a pinky without a toenail? Oh, shut up. What, what, uh, What about a nice bath, Drew? Yeah, uh, it's, couldn't hoit, right? why, What are you doing to irritate things so much? What's happening? Um, it's just after intercourse that it happens. But are you guys doing something that sort of? Nothing in, different. Uh, um, the only thing was, I'm on orthotricycline and deoxycycline. And deoxycycline and an- antibiotic. Yeah, an antibiotic is a deoxycycline, and then the not tetracycline. Um, well, te- doxycycline is a tetracycline, and one thing that does give you a great yeast infection, and maybe that's what's happening that's causing the irritation down there. Okay. Uh, you just don't know it yet. You have the discharge and all that stuff. <clears throat> it's no discharge. It's just, it's like right after we have sex. All right. Sit in that tub, baby. Yeah. No. Sure Maybe he's, uh, this, is he shaved? Or he has stubble? That could he or take? <laughs> no. Good, good question. No. No? All right. So what should she do, Drew? Nothing. Nothing. There you go, Jen. Okay. That's my favorite advice. You're okay. Okay. Just don't, well, just give it a break. Give it a rest. Yeah. All right. Now elevate your crotch. <laughs> That's what I do. I sleep like a bat. <laughs> my balls hang the other way. I like them to hang down toward my chin. You know what I'm saying, Drew? I'm listening. Okay. Just as long as you're listening. Paul, are you listening? I'm listening. Okay. Brandy? Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. All right. You're 17. What's up? Um. Well, I've had this thing for a while now. I have a boyfriend, and... I've been trying to have an orgasm and it just has not happened. That's and we've tried we've tried a lot of stuff like right, the whole me masturbating yeah. and the average seventeen positions. average seventeen year old isn't quite able to do this. Female. Really? Yeah. Just like I'll I'll talk to my friends and they're like, Yeah, I couldn't and now I can. Yeah, a lot of them a lot of them get to that point earlier than yeah. others, but you the the window you expect to get going is around eighteen to twenty two. Really? So, yeah, it's just the way the biology works and the way your central nervous system is. Is it the masturbation window or the yeah. orgasm it's window? It's the orgasm window. She's already entered the masturbation window, but it's not working. Can she uh. Uh, squeeze in through the orgasm doggy door or something, make her way into the She's orgasm window? It doesn't work. Can you see that? Tried the doggy yeah. door? Does that, does that trigger it or? No. No, it's just just you know, having a good intimate relationship, exploring these things, it'll start yeah. to kind of sync yeah. up. Yeah. I'm going back to the tub one more Don't time, Don't push it. Too. Don't push it. The ladies okay. enjoy the tub. They like Adam, the water. Adam's got a good suggestion yeah. for you. How about a little uh, water from the tub there, Brandy? <laughs> do, you know, do you know what he means? Yes. Yeah. Have you tried that out? Uh, yeah. Oh, we've tried so many things. I've just, well, like... This isn't a we unless you mean you and your vagina. Well, This uh, is a you. This is a you job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, did she yeah. did she say she could do one on her own? She doesn't do it well, by herself. Well, yeah, I can have one like with me on my own. I can have one, you know, with oral sex. I just cannot have. Oh, you have it with oral sex? Oh, please, oh, you're no, breaking my heart. That may always be the way it is. That's most women. You get one off of the oral sex yeah. at seventeen. That's pretty. That's good. That's way ahead. That's doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't. I'm trying to think of the amount of. I don't know. I don't know if any woman can have one through intercourse, Drew. I truly don't. Well, not many. That's right. Listen to the doctor, everybody. He knows. Man is a genius and never wrong. Never. You've never heard me question you, have you, Drew? It's it's probably most women don't, except on rare occasion during intercourse. Drew is rarely right. We're still talking about millions and millions of women that do. Yeah, where are they? Who's been keeping them where? In Saddam's bunker? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Never run across one of them. And it can't be me. No, no. <laughs> Paul can't be no, me, right? No. Can't be you. That's no. right. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, Dave? Yeah. You're twenty? Yeah. What's up? Um, my girlfriend, uh, she had some condoms in her room and she's going shopping for prom jewelry and her mom found the condoms. And what what, what is the prom ju- prom jewelry and the con I, I... Well, you know what we did is we hid them in our jewelry box. Ah. Uh. And her mom is making a gynecologist appointment for her next week. Mm-hmm. And she's all scared because she's heard bad things like it hurts and all sorts of stuff. Well, if you I, guys are having sex, she, you're 20. How old is she? She's 17. All right. Well, you know, sort of a iffiness there, right? Well, we've been together for three years. They're going to the prom, for Christ's all sake, right. Drew. They went shopping for prom jewelry. But most importantly, she needs to see the gynecologist if she's sexually active. It's going to be fine. But, but what about mom? Is she mad? 
Um, she's had a talk with us, and we're not allowed to be alone anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what did that talk consist of? How did that go down? Um, e- excuse the expression. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> the talk went down. Um, yesterday, when I fell asleep at her house, and I, when I woke up, mo- my girlfriend was like, hey, my mom wants to talk to you. And she's like, yeah, I want to talk. And she said she laid down some rules about how we can't be alone, I can't be there when she's not there, and all this other stuff. And uh, my girlfriend told me that she had made an appointment, and her mom told her these things that, like, it hurts, and they do, I don't know, you know. And I'm just kind of wondering what... The mom was scaring your girlfriend about the gynecologist. Yeah, and she said she looked on the Internet, and she said she's heard some bad things, but I don't know what goes on. Now, Dave, look, every woman of, uh, of reproductive age who is sexually active, must see a gynecologist or a doctor for pelvic exams every year, period. You haven't heard too many complaints from the entire population, have you? Well, she's no, I don't a, think any of them enjoy it. No, but. no one enjoys it, nor do the men enjoy the prostate exams that follow after 40. But that's it. You yes, that's it. right. Touche, I mean, ladies. I may enjoy mine. I don't know. I was going to say, Adam, notwithstanding to the contrary. My last... How, I, come, how come he's asleep on the couch at the wasn't That was interesting, the wasn't it? Yeah, I wondered that myself. Yeah, I was kind of curious yeah. to that, too. She came in like, uh, should we get back into that? No. I'm thinking about all my parents, my friend's parents, and all the yelling at her. I got yelled at, disciplined. I actually been hit twice by my friend's parents. No. I'm the only guy I know... Ray's mom. No. Ray's mom. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ray's mom, <laughs> my buddy Ray's mom, Ray was babysitting. I grabbed, uh, I was like 14, I was sleeping over there, I grabbed his Frisky magazine, you know, crazy 60s pornography, like mm-hmm. topless chicks in huge panties, <laughs> shaking cocktails, you know, like just crazy with beehives, like crazy 60s porn, you know, and... uh they all had those huge cans with big saucer nipples. I don't know what was going on in the 60s, but that was that look was in. And uh, I had the Frisky magazine, and I was checking it out, and I was in Ray's room, and I was sleeping on the floor where I belong. And uh, Ray's mom comes in, and she's like, uh, what are you doing down there on the floor? I'm like, nothing. I'm just getting, I'm getting ready to go to bed. And she's like, well, you shouldn't be sleeping on the floor. You should, you should sleep on a mattress. I said, Uh-oh. no, I'm, I'm comfortable. She's like, well, I won't have it. Get up. I'm putting you on a mattress. Now I got the Frisky magazine. It's stuffed <laughs> under the blanket. Right? And she's, I'm like, no, I'm fine. She's like, get up. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I will not have you sleeping on the floor. So I pick up the uh, the cover around the Frisky magazine, and now I'm holding basically the Frisky magazine. It's it's covered like a bird cage right, would right, be covered. Right. I'm, I'm dry, I'm keep, Now she grabs the end of my blank. She's like, oh, let me, make, let, me you know, let me make it out. And I'm like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll spread it out. I'll spread it out. I got it. I got it. She's like, no, no, let's make the bed. I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> It's like a sitcom. <laughs> so now I give her like half the blanket, but I'm still holding like the Frisky side, you know, and I'm trying to make it where I'm putting the Frisky down and not letting her see what's going on. And, and uh, she never does find the Frisky. No. I get the thing down. Wow. She leaves. You know, I'm like, ah, it's under control. I got it. I got it. Then Ray comes home that night. Well, I want a close call with your mom and the Frisky. Then the following morning, he tells her oh. while I'm eating breakfast, hey, guess who had the Frisky <laughs> under? Last yeah, night. that's why he was hanging on to the blanket. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I dodged a Frisky oh, bullet. Oh, my God. But you, uh, did. That is you got so a, Ray. a beat down at breakfast. Oh, yeah, so to very speak. humiliating. Just before breakfast, actually. Very humiliating. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And, and have been uh, physically hit, uh, like I said, two times. But not raised mom. No, no, not race mom, but uh, two other parents. Well, it's understandable. All your friends blamed you for their truancy. Their, yeah. I, I think a lot of my... Their uh, delinquency was blamed on you. There were there was a lot of notes going home from school and stuff saying you're sitting too close to, you shouldn't associate with. Shouldn't talk you were the Eddie, you're bringing you were the Eddie Haskell. That's right. I was the anchor <laughs> around their scholastic leg. I was keep. I was bringing them down with me. Yeah. Yeah. Now who's laughing with all your stupid kids making nothing? And look at me, a millionaire, literally a millionaire, Paul. <laughs> Paul's Feels impressed. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Paul's l- literally a millionaire, too. He's just with his cars. Yeah. A million dollars worth of cars. All right. Where were we? Brian? Hey. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Well, uh, I heard from a friend that you could take Benadryls to get, like, a hallucinating effect, and I had... Ended up popping 18, and I ate a little too much to eat. So I ended up like I felt sick for about an hour. Knew I was going to throw up, so I went to the toilet. I threw up a lot, about 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden my nose started to bleed. Mm-mm. And uh, every time I threw up again, 
my nose would like bleed more mm -hmm. and it would pour out even mm -hmm. more. And, right. and then after that, everything was fine. I, I was high and everything was cool. But and then I heard uh, the next day that like I almost overdosed from a friend. Well, you did overdose. That's why you hallucinate. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to overdose to get high, but not to like over overdose and. I want to know if that was like a close. Hold on, you want to you want to overdose, but not over overdose. Right. Yeah. You want you want to take it right to the edge of death and hold it back. How do you know where that line is? Uh, well, there's a site, Arrowhead, and you can look up. I mean, it's just from experiences from people, nothing like proven. So it's kind of like I'm a I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a physician. I don't know how to take you to that point and hold you. Right. right. Um, well, it had like body weight. Brian. Yeah, yeah. No one can tell you that. Right. I mean, right. You, you're, you're working pretty hard to cop a buzz at uh, 15, Brian. Yeah, I've, I've had recent... Uh, I actually called in Thursday. Right. Um, I've had recent, like, for the past two years, I've been messing around with drugs, and this is the... just like a weak experiment. All right, well, this is uh, called an anticholinergic delirium. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can get pretty sick and pretty out of it for quite some time with that and uh, do all kinds of dangerous things. No, yeah. uh, well, you learned your lesson. That's the important part, right, Brian? Right. No uh, more drugs until this weekend? Uh, yeah, I'm actually in therapy, so it's kind oh, of coming down a little bit. All have, you, right. have you told your therapist what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I've told him oh. pretty much everything. All right. Um, I actually have a question about a friend who's doing Benadryl still. Mm -hmm. um, he's, like, it's not an everyday thing, but it's, I think it's like once a week. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive, but from what he tells me. Yeah. He's taking like 12, 14 usually. All right. And, um... He's been doing what, you get speedy like, off of that? Yeah, you get, I've it, never heard of anything it's, like it's this. Maybe the, I'm out of the loop. It's from the yeah. an, anticholinergic side effects. It literally is... I mean, it's it's the kind of side effect that you'd find terribly unpleasant from a medication. If I give you a medicine that did that to you, you'd go, hey, hey, you know, don't ever give me that again. Why? What's it's, it do? It's dry. You're dry. And that's why his nose is bleeding. It dries out. Oh, yeah. You're sped up. You're halluc And the hallucinations are... They're like a manic, bizarre hallucinations. Yeah. It's, it's like all your imagination. I'm... Pretty sure. Weird things showed up. Yeah, it's your brain. You think it's all your imagination? Uh, well, yeah, yeah you know. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're insane. You mean you weren't actually seeing those uh, objects flying around the room? You say it's uh, imagination. Like, it wasn't a, a solid object. It was kind of like you could see through. It's clear. Yeah. But like it, you know. It's not your imagination. It's your brain not working right. Right. And eventually it gets to the point where it misfires and you seize. It's great. Yeah. It's good times. Is that what a seizure is? You will eventually, yeah, with this. Your brain well, misfires? Well, yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's the way huh? to think about it. All right. Hey, All uh, right. hey, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, you stick with that therapy. Yeah. You lay off the drugs. Yeah, a little and, bit. And good times, though, right? Great times, yeah. yeah. Great times. All right, everybody. All right. Thanks, go. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, Brian. Take care. I, uh, I do worry. I... I worry about the guys that are, like, <laughs> really aggressively trying to cop the buzz at uh, 15 years old. You know, like at 15, I wanted to get drunk just to, you know, have a good time. But I wasn't that, like, I wasn't uh, drinking, uh, you know, uh, furniture polish on a weeknight. Well, it turns out there's a certain percentage of humans are, and you may be in this category, are, are novelty seeking. Race, pointing, race car drivers, Paul, by yeah, the race way, car drivers tend, tend to be novelty seekers, tend to like thrill. Thrill, seekers. thrill. But it's really, it's more than thrill, it's novelty. They need novelty all the time. But people used to, you know, in our culture, we call it. What do you them, mean they need novelty I, all the time? Uh, uh, like those little penises that hop around that you wind up? Novelty penises? Well, I'm yeah, just saying... Yeah, they need to have those all around them and to be happy. That's but, what I'm but, thinking about, Paul. No, but the in, in our culture has called those people curious historically, but they really are not curious. They need the stimulation of new, new thrill all the time. They don't feel right. They feel bored and uncomfortable. Like an explorer they, in the past? It, it's, but it needs to be, mm, But it, yes, I would suppose so, but it needs to be on a thrill level. There has to be constant stimulation of that sort of they're just bored. I, I would agree with that, but yeah. I, don't, I don't seek any interest in doing anything else. Like, I don't have any interest you, to, to try drugs. No, but you found a great way to... Exclude. Bungee cord jumping or anything like that, or planes or this or but that. It's you, just, you can see how it, it, the novelty seeking can be very adaptive, because you can yeah. find a way to focus it and really becomes a passion. Yeah. You use it and drive fast and keep pushing the limits of that, and yeah. now you feel good. But uh, kids with Brian's age, with not much else going on, it's uh, Benadryl. Well, I think probably limited funds, too. It's easier to carry five packs of Benadryl out of a drugstore than two cases of beer under your arm. Yeah, or a $2 million race car. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, so what do you think somebody like Paul, if he grew up in some place that had no outlet he would, for he his, would, his passion well, or Paul, for I mean, his thrill-seeking, 
I don't want to talk to Paul. <laughs> he gives me the creeps, this kid. It's his, his seeking, his, his novel seeking is what frightens me the no, most. I grew up in a big city. Well, so. but, but I'm saying he Paul, would need, Paul I predict, wouldn't know. I don't know if Paul would I know. Predict, I predict, it'd be hard for him to say probably. He but I'd say he'd be strung he, out on heroin. No, no, he, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he would need more stimulation than average. He, he'd be the kind of kid that would be jumping off furniture. Was that you? you you'd do stuff No. Like that. Pretty pretty good calm, example, really, but bro. I just was able to. Well, I started racing at a very young age, at six years old. Yeah, so, so I was developed was doing that the skills. Yeah, at yeah. that age, and so, you so know, but I I grew up in a big city in in Toronto, which is you know, there was three four million people at that time when I was a kid, and there was you had exposure as a teenager to everything, clubs and drugs and see, he's going, he's drinking going to and all yeah, that. And it, it never really interests me. He's so going, He's going to strip bars at 7, see. <laughs> what I got, I was born, yeah, no, when he said racing, that's a euphemism for going to strip bars. Yeah, I didn't know, actually we said clubs at 7, racing. he said it. I got it. All right. All right, anyway. Well, here's what I'm saying, Drew. I'm saying, do you think Paul would have the kind of personality that would get into this stuff if he had no other outlet? I would say it would not be like Brian, but that he would be he would be looking for things that he liked, okay. which he ultimately found. You but just call a, Paul a junkie. You're a heroin addict. I heard that's you say. I, that's what I said. All right, Paul Tracy, race car driver and junkie. <laughs> Here tonight, Toyota Grand Prix coming up uh, this Sunday. I'll be uh, doing the Saturday race with the real men, the guys that uh, like four cylinders and under 200 <laughs> horsepower and a front-wheel drive automobile. Hey, Donny Osmond got upside down on one of those things. I know, I, I, I saw that, but, you know, Donnie, well, you can crash. I mean, we were oh, yeah. we were doing some practice laps, and uh, Buzz Aldrin <laughs> whacked the wall pretty good and screwed up his car. And you, you can Those get up, walls don't move. You can get up to, like, 110 on that shoreline there, and, yeah, there could be a good, good crack up. But uh, I think Donnie Osmond sort of did a low-speed rollover, but still managed to flip his car. Sure. So it can be done. All right, so we'll take a quick break, and we'll be uh, right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's the Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Next week, uh, we got uh, some 41, Chevelle, Foo Fighters, and uh, Pete Yorn in here. Well, that's a full house. Paul Tracy, race car driver extraordinaire, is in here uh, tonight. Paul is going to be racing uh, this weekend at the uh, Grand Prix. The Toyota Grand Prix, that is, out on the uh, streets of uh, Long Beach, and um, it is, uh, it's a good time. And it's a nice event. Weather's usually good. It's right by the beach there. A couple, I don't know how many people show up. Got to be 150, 175. Yeah. Pack, a lot yeah. of good-looking chicks. Tons of good stuff, free stickers, beer, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's just a, it's a nice event. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's one of these events where if, if you, if you like car racing, you'll, you'll love it. And if you don't like car racing, you'll like it. Hmm. It's good, good people watching too. Yeah, a lot of, lot of uh, people with money showing up over there. Just uh, the sounds, the smells. Your, the your part, good. the celebrity part, is what time? That's a uh, Saturday. Oh. On, uh, I don't know, the middle of the day at some point. I don't know, like 1 o'clock or something like that. I uh, I got a feeling I'm going to crash the car. Really? <laughs> that's that's the attitude I'm going in with. And then if I don't crash, it's gravy. How do you feel about <laughs> not, not being responsible for a car? I, I'll tell you, it, uh, I... Uh, <laughs> like if you write write it off as uh, no yeah. skin off oh, your no, back. Oh, no, no. Much, you're much more aggressive when you're driving. It's Somebody like else's a car. A rental car, yeah. As a matter of fact, when I first started uh, down at the uh, driving school, the uh, instructor had to, keep, had to tell me to stop letting go of the wheel. Like, stop driving with one hand and your elbow hanging out the window. <laughs> and when you're coming out of the turn, stop just letting go of the wheel and letting the thing straighten up. Because uh, that's the way I normally, you know, I got I gotta something to drink in my hand. I got my <laughs> elbow out. Yeah. I got the telephone going. I'm not used to driving a 10 and 2. It's, it's, use, your, use your knees a little bit here and there. Yeah. Use my knees, yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking to a guy... I don't like to brag, but uh, I've squeezed one off in a uh, in a Datsun truck, five speed on uh, Rambla Pacifica up there. And uh, not while you're on the cell phone, though. No, 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 I didn't have a cell phone back then. But the point <laughs> is, is th this is a guy who can drive with his knee, so, no yes, problem. Got it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Shift with my balls. That's <laughs> shift with your balls. Break with my anus. <laughs> Break with your anus. Oh, who the hell was that? It's a Monique. Oh, Lucy. Hello. Yep. You're 21. What's up? 
Well, I was just calling on the comment that you had made earlier about that girl Bambi, and she had talked about how she had an orgasm. Right. And made, yeah, right. Made Bambi. right. We made the comment that or, that that millions whatever. of women. Listen, Lucy. Oh, we, let her talk. Let well, her ask her question. Right, go, ahead. Ask. go ahead, there, baby doll. No, it was a brandy or something that she had an orgasm or something. He had said something like. Uh, that you've never met a girl or heard of a girl who can orgasm on intercourse alone? That's right. That's me, yes. Was that you? That's me. I beg to differ. Yeah? You're the, you're different? I'm totally different. Really? Yeah, but my, but I have a question for that, though. I was wondering, that. do you think that maybe it has something to do with the fact that um, my boyfriend's like 15 years older and he knows what he's doing, or...? No. no. Some women have orgasms, like, when they think about sex, they have an orgasm, or when they do sit-ups, they have orgasm. No, because I'm two well, years older than your boyfriend, and I can't give anyone an <laughs> orgasm. And some, women, <laughs> and some women will never have an orgasm during intercourse, and the majority don't have it during intercourse. The, the, that means that there are still millions and millions of women that do, but if you just do an actual percentile... Uh -huh. Most of them have it just with oral sex or some sort of direct stimulation. But what about okay? Because I've I've dated a lot of guys like before him, and I've when did your dad of... rape you? Oh no, no, that, that wasn't that was the old that was the Adam who drives with his balls. <laughs> yeah. No, this was like before. Okay, I had a lot of sex before him, and he was the only one that could actually make me come. But well, if you remember, we said that it, it starts oh, getting, cares, getting right? easier. Let me finish this. If it gets any easier when you're on between 18 and 22. And so uh -huh. as you get older, it starts sinking up a little bit. Yeah. So you, 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 you loosen up a little bit. Well, the biology hooks up. You learn about the, yourself. Yeah, you're like a catcher's mitt that gets broken in. Nothing wrong with that. Oil it up. Put the ball in there. Have Dad park the car on it overnight. <laughs> Well, I just Paul Park is a uh, new Mercedes. You, you know what else is interesting, Lucy, is that women that, that have orgasms easily think that their friends who complain about having difficulty are somehow like lying. Like, how could that be? Impossible. Well, women. It's so easy. Women have a difficult time. All human beings have a difficult time understanding how other people feel different yes. or act different yes. than they do. That's right. It's like uh, once, like you know, when I found out uh, Jimmy didn't like cashews. Oh. Are you high? He was like, I don't like him. How dare you? I don't, I, I don't believe you. You're not my friend. <laughs> then I start taking swings at him. I, mean, I couldn't believe him. And then I said, what about the honey roasted ones? Nope. Don't care for him. Almonds? No, no almonds. What? 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 Now you get me no, angry. No, no, no actually. Wait, wait, the wait, point wait. is, is don't understand it. Right. All right but Lucy. It gets competitive with women, too. Yeah. What's I have that? one every time. What's I that? never do. <laughs> What's that, Lucy? I said I have another question. Um, just out of curiosity, um, do you think that's weird that I would date somebody like like 15 years older than me? When did your dad rape you? No. Um, well, it, now, wait. It, yeah, a little bit. It's a How little she bit. Again? She's 21. And he's is it like a daddy complex? Not necessarily. What, what do you think it is? I have had that concern every now and then, but I, I don't I don't really think so. Well, what's what's the nature of the relationship? Is you, Do you want to get married? Is is just just for fun? What's happening? Well, I mean, it's a serious relationship, but we've never really thought that far. I mean, we talked about it, but it wasn't like... Has he anything. been divorced or anything? No, no. What does he make of this relationship? I think he's pretty, like... See, we, 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 see we, don't, we don't have so much of a problem with him, as you, as much as suspicious about him. Well, what's he do? do? Wanna, is he do, do something? Is he do something <laughs> with a restaurant? <laughs> does he? Yeah. No. What's he do? Construction. Well, he just, he just works. I mean, he's... Normal guy. What's his job? She doesn't know. He works at a video store. At 36? <laughs> really? He run it? What's he do at that yeah, video he's, store? He's the manager. Eh. That's like being a restaurant manager, no? No. No? No. That's no good. And what do you do? I work at a retail store. The oh. video, video retail Same store. Same place? No, no. This is totally different. All right. Not oh, fine. Right. Oh, listen, don't get pregnant. <laughs> You'll be fine. You're getting your orgasms. This guy knows, Lord knows, he brings home a new porn every night. He knows how to handle himself in the sack. Probably brings home just a huge stack of porn. I said you bring home like a Santa well, sack fantasy. full of porn that's every your night. fantasy about being a, you, maybe there's a future for you there. Every night you see me just dragging this huge pillowcase full of porn out to the car, just dragging it because I can't lift it. Having uh, having some young employee help me lift it up into the trunk of the car. Car, car leans over, squats out the suspension in the back. I drag the bumper all the way home. Yeah. 
All right. Actually, DVDs, that's, that's my new move. That's oh, you, you, you changed. You rent you, those, yeah. You moved on. Mm-hmm. Oh, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Wow, that's Just a big uh, transition, transition for you. Transition. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do with... Uh, you got to keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. And your, and your bunker, the, the porn bunker? Yeah. You just made a, a new room for DVDs? No, same room. I just took a wall out. <gasps> wow. Mm-hmm. And it probably has one of those, it's like computerized, like, 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 a, like a dry cleaner. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Ashley? Mm-hmm. You're, uh, hey, hold on. That dry cleaning thing with the crazy, <laughs> with the crazy the rack, uh, huh? automated merry-go-round, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like. That'd be a good invention. It always goes up, too. It goes up to another floor or something. But there's like 170 grand worth of this uh, tram system going on here and about eight bucks worth of store. <laughs> yes. I always think to myself, couldn't you just hang it on something and just go grab it? The, always a little difficulty with that thing, too. They yeah. pass you. Yeah. Then Corolla, Corolla. Pa- uh, oh, C-A-R. Oh, oh, with a C-O-R. They start backing right. it up, That's back right. it. It ends up taking longer because the thing takes three laps before your batch comes around or they miss it or something. Do you really? What what goes on with that thing? That's weird, huh? It's just got to cost a lot of money for one of those. Yeah. Paul, what do you think about that? I have no idea what You know what it is? It always seemed like... You know, you go the maybe It may, it may, be, it may yeah. be a Southern California thing, number one. Hmm? I wonder. And number two, it always seemed like the, the clothing went up on the, on, yeah, it on does the go up story, the and the dry cleaning all went on down below. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, i got to look into this. Whatever. <laughs> Anderson, Ashley? Anderson's actually agitated by our discussions tonight. I can't I know. Say, can't Ashley, you're 18. What's up? I have two up? questions for you. Yeah. Um, the first one is, can you get a yeast infection from oral sex? I can. Well, just about anything can uh, sort of upset the f- the <clears throat> chemistry of that region, and that can set you up for a yeast infection. But it's not as though you're likely to pass a yeast infection from the mouth. Okay. Because the guys, people that have yeast infections in their mouth are people that have autoimmune diseases or are on medication that suppress their immunity that cause the yeast to overgrow in the mouth. Oh. Because I've had, like, reoccurring yeast infections for the last, like, eight months. Like, and, re- months. and reoccurring yeast is a very common thing. Really? Yeah. But you're just having oral sex? No, I mean, I have regular sex, too, but it just, I mean, I stop, and it still comes back. Were you using a condom? Um, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes. How come, what are Who's you Who's honking that horn out there? Uh, it's a car alarm. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Jesus it won't Christ. Go off. People should be sued. Um, I went to the doctors, and, like, they checked me for diabetes and mm-hmm. everything. Right, that's good. That's an important thing to do. How are they trying to treat it? Um, I just actually got a prescription today. They gave me 12 doses of Diflucan. Mm-hmm, which is a lot. Yeah, and they want me to take one every three days. Yeah, and that will that will clear it up. And if there's anything else that you're sort of doing to yourself or introducing that's putting you at risk for that, it will come back. Yeah, and, and then I have know. Terazol. Terazol, these are all very powerful yeast medicine, anti-yeast medicine. Yeah, medicine. so I'm hoping that that will take No, it will make it go away, but it may not stay away. I'm thinking about honking horns now, and I realize... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This is called this is called tangential thinking, Paul. With that, I can't help it if I'm gonna hear nothing but a horn in the background or call. I gotta focus on. I'm thinking about how hot hunk. it is in here. Isn't it that? is hot in here. Oh yes, my God. it's gonna heat up when I'm done talking about honking my horn. No doubt. I'll tell you yeah. that. I would like to make a plea to all the folks on the West Coast, specifically the uh, Southern California area, of Los Angeles, to start using their goddamn horn just a little bit more. Learn from the New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. Now, people people go, oh, New York, oh, they honk, they honk. They're always honking. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I have uh, made a practice of honking through a couple of cars to the, co- to the culprit really car. Pissed off in mm-hmm. They do. I, the you know, like in California, you can make a right-hand turn on a red. There will be cars that will be parked on the red in the right-hand turn lane. There's no traffic coming. They're not turning right. And the two cars behind them aren't honking. Aren't yeah. honking. Yeah, you're right. So I honk the horn, and I get the person in front of me give me the, hey, what do you want me to do? I'm not. I got this car in front of me, and I give him the start honking at that guy, you jackass. My horn's no good for my range. My horn, so I got like a half car, <laughs> car and a half range. You, your it is, is your job. You're just as guilty as the guy who's not turning right you if you're get, not honking. You can get shot out here for that. That worth it. Though. Worth it. And so I now then honk through cars at people. But I did something uh, the other day, which is I actually honked at a car that I had nothing to do with. And this is, this is where I've really taken my passion <laughs> of honking to a new level. I uh, was driving. I was going to make a left. There was a car just in the left-hand lane. And 
uh, not in the turning left lane, but just in the regular lane. He wasn't going anywhere, and everyone was stacked up behind him, and the light was green. I slid up next to him. I noticed he was down looking for something in his passenger seat. I gave him the honk for all my brethren behind him. I honked for the honkless. I honked for the honky who would not honk. Yeah. And I'm like the Robin Hood of honking now. Yeah, it's not not for myself anymore. I, I honk for the for the from the rich and I give to the poor with my honking. I honked to the guy and told him to get moving, but no one behind him would honk. What is going on here? I mean, if, if these gang members, they, yeah. they, they, they this is the this, ultimate this is crime. It's they terror. won't let us use our horns. These goddamn gang members. Terrorism. Yeah, and you usually get a warning shot or something before they actually aim it into the car. So please, everyone, start honking. I don't care. I don't care. If I get honked on for not doing something, fine. You know what it is? People are not <laughs> aggressive drivers out here. They're passive. No, they're passive me. aggressive. They're, they're passive they, aggressive. The thing I notice, because I travel around a lot, yeah. people on the East Coast, they're very aggressive. change lanes yeah. quick. They move quick. They yeah. stop, go. Here, if traffic stops, people will just sit there and stop and wait and wait and wait. Yes. And if, then if you move over into another lane, you... But and, you're, you're terrorized. Cut, can though. cut somebody, then the guy gets so pissed off. Yes, they want to kill you. Well, here is this is the land where people zoom in front of you and then slow down. Yeah, to, to teach you a lesson. Oh, listen, yeah, we, yeah. we got a lot of angry people. We got a lot of pussies here. We got a lot of folks without insurance, and we got a lot of uh, troublemakers or foreigners, as I call them, who uh, don't know how to drive. And let's be honest. And people people think this is a, a racist thing, but it's not. Let me explain why. <laughs> we. Uh, I have to explain this every once in a while. You, you want to know why we can't, why we get our ass kicked in soccer every year? Because these other countries have been playing their whole life. Right. This, this is what they say. They say, I say, the United States is the greatest athletes in the world. How come we come in 128th in soccer every year? They say, you know why? Because it's part of their culture. Yeah. They grew up, their parents, their grandparents, they've been playing soccer for hundreds of years. It's a new sport for you over here. I realize, yes, this is what goes on with driving. These grandparents are driving around 10 speeds. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Their parents were uh, dragging rickshaws and uh, driving mopeds around. This is like the first generation of a lot of these foreign folks who actually got four wheels under them, and they're not too good. They're about as good at driving as we are at soccer. It's like picking up skiing as an adult or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's got to be part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. Part of the culture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, God it's willing. The same as anything. Picking up racing as an adult yeah, is difficult yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. Their kids and their kids' kids will be uh, kind of, hopefully... God willing, my son and his son will not have to use the horn against the son or, of the other men. Or even better, <laughs> yes. they will use it properly. That's right. Yeah. All right. Paul no, Tra- not all right. Paul Tracy. Yeah, that's the guy you get. Paul Tracy, race car driver's here tonight. He's uh, going to be at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix Long Beach this Sunday. I'll be there on Saturday, and we'll be right back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Paul Tracy's here tonight. Paul is a uh, fantastic race car driver. He's going to be down at the uh, Grand Prix this week of uh, Long Beach and uh, the Toyota Grand Prix, that is. And uh, they're also uh, they're going to have some uh, vintage uh, Grand Prix cars down there. I think like '76 through '83 uh, or something like that, doing a doing a race. Mm. I think it's pretty Sunday. cool. I went and looked at them today. A lot of old Ferraris and had Gilles Villeneuve's car there, and and in really good condition. Yeah, really, uh, really bitching Christine. cars. Yeah, somebody figured out uh, that uh, these race cars, even when they're uh, past their racing prime, are still worth uh, quite a few bucks, and uh, not to part them out or uh, put them in a barn like they used to. Oh, it kills you when you think about. It. You hear these stories. Some of these vintage race cars from the 60s and even, uh, you know, early 70s, mid-70s. Some of these things that were just like, back, we couldn't give them away after we were done racing them, you know. Now the GT40 is worth $3 million. Yeah. They were asking 6500 Ooh. <laughs> you know, it's like that. They didn't know what to do with them. They're uh-huh. like, well, you know, we, we campaigned the car in 69 and 70 and 71, and then 72 came in and the car was outdated and what are you going to do with a race car you can't drive it on the street still i see that all is symptomatic of the 70s but anything that came before anything old meaning more than two years old bad yeah. trash crap Junk. yeah Junk. everything they sprayed that acoustic cottage cheese all over the car of course, they put, of course. They put gold glitter on it a little tiling put it's some amazing bad mirror tile on it how much old race cars are worth you know now you know it's 
It's crazy what, it's, what, what cars are worth. Ferraris are into the into the millions. Uh, many of them. I mean, there's there's tons of cars that are that are into the millions. But uh, I mean, the Ferraris. It's not like well, that one Ferrari's worth uh, two million. It's like they they all are. They have some kind of uh, racing pedigree from the '60s, mm-hmm. early '70s, whatever, even even beyond. They're just worth millions of dollars. And and were considered eh, sort of worth something, but not not really. Not back then. Like, what are you going to do? Can't drive them on the street. Can't race them anymore. All right. Let's talk to... Uh, this is the same way I feel about my Beanie Babies. This is why I'm going to hang on to them, Drew. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, yes. So we've got Pokemon cards, too. Yeah. Shrewd. Oh, yeah. Shrewd. David? Uh, yeah. You're 17? Uh, sorry. Hold on a second. All righty. Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah. Um, my question is, um, do you think it's important, like, if you have a girlfriend... Do you think it's important to know their past relationships, like sexually? Sure. Well, well I see. If you, do you think you're going to get a disease? Right. Or something? Well, I mean, well, I mean, I know that, but like, let's say um, her ex-boyfriend gave her an orgasm, but you couldn't. No, that kind of history you don't need. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, because like that kind of happened to me, and <laughs> I would do whatever. I mean, like, I would go for so long, and like, I don't know what's the deal. Yeah. She would tell me that, you know, she's had it. She's had one before. And I was like, what's the deal? So, yeah. like, and other things, it kind of discourages you. kind of lowers your confidence sometimes. More more mystery, less history. Yes. I mean, like, what do you think is important to know? Besides, you know, if they, if they didn't get any diseases or anything like that? Well, I mean, I think you want to know um, what, sort of what their level of experience is just to make sure... You know, if you if you, if you're dating somebody who's went through the entire you know senior class at the high school, chances are she's a little nutty. She's got some issues, and you may just be one of those guys she's going through, mm-hmm. which is not always a bad thing. But if it's that sort of thing, you'd want to know. And if she has any obviously any diseases or uh, any festering anything, you'd want to know. But just getting into that history of oh yeah, I mean, and then they and they don't even know what they're doing. Those women, they're like. Oh, thank God you have an average-sized penis, my <laughs> last guy. Oh. He was, was so a, huge. Oh, he was a can of paint. It was painful every time. Oh, and then went back door. Forget about it. I <laughs> cried. It's like, now you're crying. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't, need, to, you don't need to hear that. Yeah, nothing. You always nothing, end up hearing it, but <laughs> you don't need to hear it. What's that? Nothing in the bedroom you want to know too much about. Uh, no, not, really, not no. too much. Not too much. Just, no. just they're not at, engaged in at-risk behaviors. <laughs> Yeah, all right there, Dave. But you, you were able to uh, find out that she had a um, had an orgasm with the last guy. Well, yeah, and like I don't know how or why, but whatever I did, it looked like she she just wouldn't have. Yeah. One. Well, lucky. Look at I mean, it as a lucky yeah, orgasm. That's like a, you know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it is like kind of like. The, all right, I'm done with uh, David's mm-hmm. half baked. You have a small penis, penis you fag. <laughs> true, true. Quiet down. Yeah, you don't need to know. I'm done asking. Yeah, you don't ask anything. You married, Paul? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You're done talking to her, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even want to know. Yeah, I'm not too inquisitive anyway. Yeah, so. you don't even know about the past. I don't even want to know about the present. I don't even want to know about that. <laughs> How I, she's I'm, doing now? I'm always one week ahead of wherever we are. Yeah. Let's talk to uh, Katie, who's 24. Katie? Oh, hi. What's up? <laughs> I didn't think you'd get to me. Um, well... Gosh, um, well, I basically told uh, whoever was on the phone. Who answers the phone? Oh, just ask your question, would you? Uh, sorry. Uh, I should know better. I've listened to the show forever. Um, well, uh, my problem is that I'm a lesbian, mm-hmm. but I have problems or issues having sex. Mm-hmm. Like what I'm uncomfortable in a way. With, with, uh, with a woman? With a woman. Yeah. And what, uh, I've never been with a man, but sure, I, stop that. I, I don't have any desire. Mm-hmm. Um, never been with a guy. Never been with a guy. Hmm. Paul turned you. He turned you right around. <laughs> I've heard that more than once. <laughs> About Paul? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, you, uh, you've never been with a man, but yet you're uncomfortable with a woman. Yeah. Yeah, this mm. seems like a, a bad hand. Yeah. It sounds like whatever sort of got her this way may have the reason maybe the reason why she's uh difficult how, in any how old relationship. Twenty four. Twenty four. What um 
So were you sexually abused growing up or something? I was molested, yes. Yeah, and so that, that's what I'm picking up on, that, that your sexuality got sort of scrambled by that, and now you are you are gay, and that's fine, that's just the way you are. Yeah. But that really intimacy is the bigger issue with you, and that, that sexual abuse. Maybe a woman did the sexual abuse. No. No? Mm -hmm. No. Who was it? Neighbor boys. Neighbor boys, uh. Boys, All right. Uh, yeah. That's bad. And girl? <laughs> oh, just uh, the brothers? Yeah. All right. And uh, I, why can't you be with a woman, do you, do you think? I I wish I could answer that. Well, she, <laughs> she can't be vulnerable. She can't be right. intimate. That, that's just all the trauma yeah. stuff. And well, you, you, how you know, about you, a little therapy? Do you have panic attacks, that sort of thing? Yes, anxiety. Yeah, yeah I mean, I see, you, you, this is all post-traumatic stress disorder. So you really need to get in there, get some treatment, get this managed, get some therapy for trauma survivorship. And you, as you said, you've been on some medication to help with some of that biology that's left behind. And maybe after you develop a relationship with a therapist, then you can become open and intimate in a real relationship. All right. Paul Tracy, race car driver, here tonight. Going to be at the uh, Long Beach Grand Prix Toyota coming up. Uh, or uh, Toyota Long Beach Grand Prix. Toyota Grand Prix Long Beach. Coming up uh, this Sunday. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Paul Tracy, our guest tonight. Paul is a uh, extraordinary race car driver who's going to be uh, down at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach uh, coming up uh, this Sunday. And it's uh, quite an event if you want to get out there and uh, see the sights. Good for uh, people watching. Good food, too. It's not like, uh, not like the ballpark. It's a good chow. Buy some stuff. Get yourself like a miracle chamois. <laughs> and uh, you might even see some porn stars. Yeah, they have porn stars out there. They, they got everybody. They got the, got those chicks. Uh, they just got some chicks like for English leather or something running around. I, I don't know. Like good look, good looking women, rich old guys. A lot of people getting a good buzz going by noon. Yeah, it's a it's a crowd that likes to uh, get drunk and watch other people do stuff. Mm. Yeah, but they got some money. They back it up. You work their sounds way like a, into. Sounds like a strip club. Yeah, you just you sort of you slide into the uh, hospitality tent, you crack a few buds, you uh, suck up some nachos, and you watch the whole race on the TV from the hospitality tent while you're getting <laughs> drunk. I don't know why you couldn't just get a 12 pack and sit home and watch it on TV, but it's not the same. It's not the same. You don't get to uh, you don't get to hear the sounds, see the sights. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, Zach, who's 23. Zach. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey. Um, I just had a question for Paul Tracy. Mm-hmm. Paul, um, how do you think you're uh, shaping up against the rest of the circuit uh, this year? Well, I, I think pretty good. I've got, uh, we've had two races so far this year, and I've won the first two, so Who's that's, your, uh, that's gone pretty well. Uh, right now, I mean, at this point of the season, it's uh, the Newman Haas team with Sebastian Bordes has been the fastest guy, and and uh, and Bruno Junquera. They'll be they'll be strong all year. Okay, okay, those are the guys to look out for, yeah. Yeah. His number one competition is himself. <laughs> I'm Sounds my own impressive. worst enemy sometimes. Yeah, he, he's doing all the winning. He doesn't worry about who's behind him. One more question, Paul, and I'll let you go. Um, I was wondering how you got involved. How'd you get started in uh, racing? From what age were you when you started? I started racing when I was uh, six. I, six I, I had a, uh, a little mini bike in the garage when I was about five and I was showing off to one of my friends and started it up and it, it took off across the garage and went through the garage door. <laughs> so my dad took it away from me and then uh, a couple months later he brought home a, a go-kart and we just kind of went went from there. So you started, yeah, let's go through your uh, racing here, I mean, in, uh, briefly, but you, you started off with go-karts, mm -hmm. then into what? I went, cars. Uh, I went to what what they would call as Formula Ford, which is an open wheel car with a sixteen hundred liter Ford engine. Mm -hmm. um, right sixteen hundred cc, not right. liter. Sixteen hundred cc. What age Ford are you? Engine. I was sixteen. You could start racing in Canada at sixteen. And, and then and from there it was Formula Ford two thousand, which is a two thousand cc. And then from there I went to Formula Atlantic, and then Indy Lights, and then Indy Lights to Indy Cars. And uh, this was well. How old are you now? Thirty-four. Yeah, you look pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Have you had any uh, horrible crashes? Uh, a couple. I've been pretty lucky. I've had. I mean, I've had a lot of crashes over the years, but I've never had any 
major, major ones. I broke my leg once, and I, I fractured a vertebrae in my neck, but nothing that's kept me out of the car for a long time. Is uh, is Long Beach, I, I guess I've been down to Long Beach probably, I don't know, eight or ten times. I've never really seen any bad crashes over there the times that I went. Is it considered a, a fairly no, safe it's a, course? No, it's a safe track. I mean, the track, a lot of the street courses we go to, they're, they're slower. The speeds are slower in the corners. I mean, the straightaway at Long Beach will we'll hit 190. Oh, will you get um, up to 190? Yeah, we hit 190 on the straight, but the the corner at the end is about a you know 40 or 50 mile an hour corner. So uh, they give a lot of room for runoff, and the tracks are designed pretty safe now. So it's it's a lot better than it was in the in the 70s. And the way the cars are designed, they're they're designed to protect the driver, not be a basically a ball of fuel around you when you hit something that the car used the cars used to catch fire and yeah then they didn't really have like uh if you go you you watch uh the speed speed channel and you watch all these uh vintage shows from the 60s and 70s they didn't really like uh have a whole they lot of consideration no, they for designed safety. for safety i mean those cars were all aluminum and when you'd hit something they'd sh you know basically you're sitting inside of a coke can yep. and on each side of you was a fuel tank and when yep. you ruptured the fuel tank, the car would catch fire, and it and was the, just pretty much bad news. Guys' feet would hang out, you know, way over where the cage was and stuff. So yeah. if they ran into anything, their feet basically hit first. I mean, it was. Uh, I, I guess they sort of figured that. I, I think back in the day, they looked at race car driving as sort of like a daredevil, mm -hmm. like uh, like you're doing, uh, like mm -hmm. you're a stunt pilot or right. or jumping motorcycles or something. It was pretty much. Of, I mean, I re read Mario Andretti's book, and I mean, he talks about all the friends that he lost and hmm. he was amazed that he didn't have any you know yeah, bigger yeah. accidents than, yeah. than what he had yeah. with some of the cars that he drove in the 60s and 70s were real dangerous they didn't have roll bars and stuff for a long time it was bad times they didn't have those fuel cells you know, fuel just flew out everywhere and caught on fire now they got these uh, fuel cells that are like made of ballistic material you shoot them with a shotgun they don't do anything oh yeah I think I got one of those in my car you know I got a, I got a, yeah, I got a full ride from Toyota this year. You know, to pick me up for one race. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> Bridget. Yes. You're 16. Yeah. Oh, if Angie Everhart beats me, I swear I'll cry. <laughs> That's the only. I, I can't have Angie Everhart or Buzz Aldrin beat me. That's, that's my own, my two main concerns for the race. Okay. What if you crash? Uh, I'll have to get out of the car. I'll, if I crash, throw yourself got, in front of their car. I got to, uh, or I got to take them into the wall with okay, me or something. Take them they, with they, you. they can't. Pa they cannot beat me. Bridget. Yeah. You're 16. So what's going on? Okay. Um, a couple of my friends were like already had sex, and after their second or third time, it felt good. And I've had sex like eight times, and um, it's never felt good. It's hurt like really bad, except for my first time. I like didn't feel anything because he was really small. But same guy every time, or? Um, no. How many different guys? Five. Five different guys, and you don't enjoy it. No. It's like a heroin addict doing heroin for not, and they don't like it. You know, why, why do you do it then? Well, because I figure it's going to get better, you know, because everybody, this is the more you do it, the better it gets. Yeah, but I, I think you, you keep hopping to or on the new guy. I think that's the problem. I think you got to work it out with one guy. Well, I don't know. Yeah, but, you got to have a relationship. Mm. It's yeah. not, not going to feel better otherwise. Well, like my cherries never popped either. I don't think because I mean, if I somebody know. if a penis went inside you, the hymen is broken. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. What about the guy with the really small one? Mm, for sure. Okay. Hey, Bridget. Yeah. Are you seeing a, a guy now? Kind of. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Y you like him? Uh, kind of. Well, what's up? Well, he's. I don't know. He's not like really someone you'd want to settle down with. He's like a. Yeah. Dad yeah. just moved away. What is he? Just now. I don't know. He's, years. Um, Where's your dad? I live with my dad. You do? Yeah. Where's your mom? My mom lives uh, like six hours away from me. Mm hmm. What happened with her? Um, they got a divorce. And? When did she pull up stakes? Um, when did she what? <laughs> Leave. Oh, uh, she left like a year and a half ago. Mm hmm. Well, Drew said, uh, what, two years, a year mm -hmm. and a half? Mm hmm. Uh, and uh, your mom, how often do you see her? Um, I see her like Christmas, and she comes up for some of my dance stuff, so I see her pretty often. And why aren't you living with her? Because um, all my school is up here and everything. How do you feel about this, being away from her? Uh, I'd rather live with her, but it's... What's Dad like? Um, we didn't really get along. I never, he was never, I don't know, when I was younger, he wasn't really there. Where's my bourbon? You're living, you're, you sort of don't have a parent now. 
Oh, kind of. No. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> no wonder you're running amok here and just jumping around trying to find some way to feel better. Well, it's like muck, but it starts with an F. Running an F, yeah. Uh, it, so, Bridget, mm -hmm. you need to find a guy that you're into and have a relationship with him. Okay. And then it'll feel good. Right, right now, you're just sort of recreating these abandonments. You know, your mom abandoned you. Your dad's never been available. Well, my mom didn't really abandon me. She... Well, effectively, she has. And that may not have been a willful abandonment, yeah. but she's gone. And so you, you're reenacting that over and over and over again. Hey, you stop, okay? Okay. Just have a real relationship. It'll be all right. You're worth it. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, baby doll. Bye. Hey, good times. Let's talk to uh, Katie, who's 16, too. Katie? Hi. What's up? Um, like, my nipples are cracked. They're not, like, solid, like the end of your, like, pinky or something. And it's been like that since, like, I can remember. Mm -hmm. And, like, on the very tip, it's, like, a light yellow or something. And I could actually, like, peel it away if I wanted to, like a scab. Yeah. It's really weird. And I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like yeah. I had, like, a bunch of, like, boyfriends, and they've, like, actually seen my boobs, and they have no problem. They, like, haven't even noticed anything. Yeah. Or anything. They would but know if a sprinkler again, key was sticking out of your forehead, yeah, really, when yeah. they got a boner. Say, like, guys don't really know anything. That's right. Yeah. Well, we know. We just don't care. Uh, There's a difference. There you go. Yeah. The, po the point is the most imp the important part is you're, that you're naked, and they're not and about... You're, and you're there. Not about well, to jeopardize that by making fun of your nipples. I've never really, like, I, I haven't had sex or anything. Yeah. What are you doing with these guys? Um... Just like oral or something, but I haven't done that unless like I've been with them for like a long time. Like I'm not, like I won't do it after a month. I actually wait a while. So. All right, mm -hmm. all right. So what's going on with the nipples, Drew? Are they you getting irritated? Are they rubbing up against something repeatedly? Um, no. Well, if somebody else touches me, then it, like it's a little sensitive. But like I could do that, and it doesn't bother me at all. Do you ever try putting any moisturizing creams on there, anti-inflammatory creams, that sort of thing? I haven't tried that. Uh, I, I, got, I got a theory. I got a theory. These guys that you're uh, giving oral to, do they have reinforced knees on their jeans? Hmm. What? Yeah, you see what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, I hear you. If they were standing, fly was open, she was down in front of them, it would be just about right for that. I used to wear the reinforced knee. Sure. I'd wear the super denim, oh, you know, the J.C. Penny the jeans. Oh, yeah. The shiny ones that the mm -hmm. chicks dug. <laughs> Paul, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Chicks dig that. They see a guy with that big reinforced patch on his knee. They know he means business. I've only given oral once. Oh, you only once? Yeah. All right. Well, what's about, what about some cream on there, Drew? Yeah, just uh, work. It's a pretend it's skin that was irritated. Are you sure? Because it's been like that for a long time. Well, the, I, I don't quite know what you're describing. Maybe she's so. lactating a little bit, and that's just dried up. Yeah, that occurred to me, but you have a doctor take a look at it. That, that's about the best thing you can do. Oh, okay. Because I don't. It, it's hard for me to get an image of what you're describing here, but I, it just sounds like inflamed from some reason, maybe from rubbing. There's like little like cracks in it. It's weird. Yeah, I know, but that's just inflammation. That's but you've not thought to put any like hand cream on it. Well, I have before, but like I've never really been dedicated to it. Like, all right. How about you uh, rededicate yourself to putting cream on your boobs? Utter bomb. And all women should now dedicate themselves to doing that. Okay. All right. Your phone's run out of battery, so yeah. we're gonna let you go. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. She didn't seem too concerned about it. No. Let's talk to. Uh, uh, people out here don't know what utter bomb is, I don't mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Well, of course, a phone screener Brian knows because he knows everything. But <laughs> Paul, you know what utter bomb is? Tara, yeah. Tara gave me that one. Well, Tara barely knows her last name. But utter bomb is this stuff that, uh, I guess they use it. They use it like Minnesota and yeah. stuff like that. It's Northern Plains. Thing. I guess you'd rub it on the udder of a cow. Mm -hmm. Keeps it during, moist. During the cold months. Yeah. yeah. Keeps it supple. Yeah. Yeah. It's good times. hands and stuff. Yeah. It's good times. It's good times. Yeah. Oh, it's antiseptic cream, says uh, says Brian, the phone screener. Yeah, whatever. I thought it was just like hand cream. I didn't know it was... Uh, it has a whole bunch of stuff in it, apparently. Yeah. It's good it's stuff. Like I don't recommend... Secret formula. Can you similar beat to, off with similar it? Similar to bag bomb? Of course. You can? Of course. Really? All right. I'll try that out. How dare you? Gina? Yeah, hi. Yeah, you're 27. What's up? I am. Um, first of all, I want to tell you guys that you're awesome. Um, the only thing, and it's not really a criticism, mm -hmm. it's just that earlier in the segment, um, Drew was talking to the woman that was on birth control, but also taking um, the antibiotic. And uh, uh, I used to work in an abortion clinic. Hold on a second. What antibiotic was you talking? Um, tricycline. Or not tricycline. The doxy doxycycline. <laughs> Diflucan? Um, no, it was a cycling. All right. Yeah, but she had a question about yeast infections and clitoral megaline stuff. 
Yeah, but um, the the only thing I really wanted to say was that... Um, That'll screw up the effectiveness of the pill, of course. Uh, yeah. Any of the tetracyclines will, but that wasn't what we were talking about. Oh, no, I understand. I was just... Um, I just, I guess, wanted to say that to women is because so many times their doctors fail to tell them ah. that any time they're taking a medication with birth control pills, they can totally get pregnant. So they need to use a backup method. And uh, I just saw so many women who had no idea. Yeah, you know, it's true. Because a lot of teenage girls don't want to tell their family doctors that right. they're on the pill. So. Right, that's a good point. In fact, uh, tetracycline is the one that classically does it. And she mentioned doxycycline, which is a type of tetracycline. Other medication, we really don't know how much it interacts with the pill. But... Basically, the best rule of thumb is if you're on any antibiotic and almost any medication, you should use a second backup method. When you yeah. say backup, you mean anal? Condom. Condom. Condom and, or, and or backup, the way you mean it. I see. I'm confused. Yeah. Well, she, both backup or backup. Gina. Yes. You, you worked at an abortion clinic? I did. I was a counselor. Oh, boy. How'd that go? I loved it. You did? I you're, did. I loved it because... Women would come in, and they were nervous, they were scared, they really didn't know that much about their bodies. Like I said, so many women got pregnant, um, and they were on the pill. And of mm -hmm. course, there's always user error, but a lot of times it was because they were on an antibiotic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it was interesting because it, we were able to talk with women, not just about the procedure, but also about their bodies and, you know, um, how to keep... We gave them a lot of information so that they could take better care of themselves and be more responsible and did you get into the morning after pill um yes we did and we also handed out um sheets that gave different um dosages of their current prescriptions so if they um so it would work you know, like the morning them. after yeah yeah and what you ever you get shot at by any uh, christians or anything um no we had weekly protesters you did um, weekly yeah. what would they do um, they would just stand outside. I mean, well, since space was enacted, they're not allowed to come up to the clinic door or block access mm -hmm. to the entrance. But um, they had gory pictures, and, you know, they tried to yell at women coming in through the front door. You know what you got to um, do? You got you to gotta pee in one of those old fire extinguishers and then uh, hose them down when you're pulling <laughs> in. That's what I do. We That's can't. That'd be harassment. They have just as much right to say what they feel as we well, do. Well, they, they have a right to protest. You have a right to uh, pee in a fire extinguisher. Do you know any sense of why people have such a problem with the morning after pill? Um, to be quite honest, I think it's a religious thing. That but, was just but, my interpretation of ev it. Every single person I've ever spoken to that has an objection to it refuses to come to terms with how it actually works. A lot of people refuse to come to terms with how a lot of things work yeah. when it comes to birth control. Well, yeah. listen, you're dealing with people who think the uh, earth is 2,000 years old. And uh, that uh, Noah took a uh, took an ark and filled it full of two of every animal and put it on top of a mountain somewhere. I mean, you're not dealing with uh, scientists here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, why are you trying to preach science to people who aren't interested in science? Aren't interested in the truth? Yeah. Well, that's uh, exactly. that's science. Yeah. Good. But these are the same people that um, you know encourage women to um, abstain, which is pretty much ludicrous because 16 year old girls and boys are not going to do that yeah. um, well, they it's, want to it's, offer it, birth control to them tell them to keep their babies when they are not in a position to do so and then refuse them welfare when they do decide to keep them yeah so well they, they uh, hopscotch around that's all right <laughs> completely they don't yeah. want to take responsibility but they want you to do yeah. it and, and then and then when the kid mean. then when the kid they didn't want to board it uh finally uh puts a shiv in someone at age 15 they don't want to put them they want to put them in the chair which is yeah. uh, which is good too, which I'm all for. But I'm just saying, oh, you know, I'm consistent. I want the abortion and the chair. Oh yeah, well I've, I actually would like to do a program where we abort the uh, fetus, and then 20 years later, actually put it in the electric chair. The same one. The same Figuring material. it would have caused some crime along the way. Really sending a message. Really a strong <laughs> anti-crime message. Paul, we think Paul's nodding his head feverishly. I can tell he agrees. Yes, Paul. I agree. Paul I, has to leave in a few minutes. Yeah, it would take one more call. You got anything up here for Paul? Uh, he got, he's no. got some car-related questions up here. No. I may just have to talk about cars for a while before right. Paul leaves. All right. All right, let's see. <laughs> Paul got himself uh, the, Are new, you nervous? Uh, the new Merc. Oh, oh, driving in the race? Yeah. No. I'm only, really, I'm only nervous You're about... You're not there yet, though. No, nah, I won't be nervous. No? I'm, I'm only... No, I uh, Adam, barely, sure. Adam barely has a pulse. What I hate I about? hate to brag. I really do. I really do. God knows I hate but to brag. But here we go. I, uh, I I did a bunch of laughs with the instructor on the track uh, a, a few weeks ago. And the yeah, guy, but it's, there's no crowd there. 
that. There's no people watching. Instructor said, never saw somebody calmer than me. Tell Ever. him the pee story. He must have hit a, smoked a bowl before the, that, huh? The pee story? I just, I, I don't get, uh, I mean, I'll be excited to do it. I, I, here's what I'll be nervous about. I'll be nervous about not doing well, but yeah. not nervous about the actual, you know, I, I'm not nervous about crashing or nervous about anything bad happening. I'm just being nervous that's the about same, the same for me. I get more I get more worried about wanting to do well than yeah, cra- whether I'm going to crash or whether I'm, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. It's, you you want your own anticipation levels are so high that you want to do well to yeah. save face for yourself. Well, and there's like a point like I said, for me it's Angie Everhart or Buzz Aldrin beating me. That's really that's really where the nerve it's competition. set in. But there's, I think, in anything that you do, Drew, over yeah, here, I'm buddy. listening. Over here. There's uh, anything you do, I mean, you don't do everything. You know, you don't get up to the home plate every, when you're playing a softball game and expect to hit it over the center field wall you just, but you just that's 400 hit feet away. Yeah. That might be out of your range. Maybe if you're, you know, Ken Griffey Jr., Mark McGuire, that's what you expect, and you might be disappointed if you didn't. But if you're us, you don't expect to do that. But you know you can get a nice double. And if you strike out, you're going to be disappointed because you know yeah. you're capable of getting that double, and this is the kind of situation where you kind of get one trip to the plate, and there's a lot of people watching, and you know you could put one in the alley and get a nice stand-up double, and that's what you hope you do. Yeah. So you're not nervous about not hitting the home run, but you are nervous about fouling one off your uh, nutsack and uh, lip it, limping back to the uh, dugout <laughs> and uh, having Buzz Aldrin and uh, Andy Everhart beat you. That's that's the main concern. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get Josh Brolman here tomorrow night, who mm. uh, you wouldn't be nervous about beating him because uh, he's fast. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All right. Drew, I wish you were out there. You, just so you could kick my ass? That's yeah. right. Wuss you. Mm. All right. That's it for uh, Paul Tracy. Always well, good, good luck. Always good, luck good to see weekend. you. Oh, yeah. Now, you'll be down. Will I'll you be, be there if you need any tips. Come around and see me. You'll be there on Saturday? I'll be there all weekend. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at. Uh, I'm not just just not just driving tr- uh, driving tips, but I actually want to screw with the car a little, like advance the timing, maybe uh, take the back seat out of it, roll the windows up. You know, I do just, some. I, I like using what they call the chrome horn. Yeah, what's that? How does that work? Well, the front bumpers on older cars are chrome, and oh. I use that as a horn. Use that. Yeah, that's my horn. Yeah, the, but there's going to the be bumper. nobody in front of me. <laughs> Nobody but Buzz well, and, and Angie. If there is, use the chrome horn. All right, I'm using the chrome horn on those two. Drew? Yeah, I'm, I'll be here to... I'm going to give you the flesh horn. <laughs> Get in that bathroom. Paul Tracy, everybody. <gasps> Best of luck on Sunday. I'll be uh, rooting for you, and I'll see you there on Saturday. Until uh, then, we'll uh, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Buddy, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Paul Tracy has uh, left the building, and uh, now it's just me and my on and off again lover, Dr. Drew. Off again? On and off. Okay. Yeah. What are you eating there, Drew? Donut. Nice job. Uh, Drew, did you want to be watching the news today? A little bit. Why? Seeing those big uh, Saddam statues getting yanked down mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are pretty excited uh, that he's gone over there, which is good. Yeah. And I know a lot of you uh, Yahoo lefties over there were uh, predicting something different. But uh, magically, when the Berlin Wall comes down, you got everyone pretty much picking up a, a sledgehammer and seeing what they can do to get it down. And when you see Saddam's statue coming down, you got a bunch of people kicking it in the head with a sandal. Mm. Doesn't that uh, doesn't, doesn't say anything to all you folks that are allegedly for the little people out there? That, that's the thing that kills me. I mean, just just look. Just can't you learn from this that this guy could not have been dislodged? Look what it took to dislodge this guy. Some, some economic sanction was going to take this guy out. No right. way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. And look at look at how he encouraged his people to. I mean, the lawlessness and the cruelty and the horrible way that his his people behaved. Yeah. I, they need to go. That's it. And they need to be liberated. And, and the only way you do that, unfortunately, we didn't ask for that. There's no, only but, one way you can do that. Yeah, you gotta you got to punch a tyrant in the mouth. You can't talk to him about it. You just dance around. Impossible. And all, the, all your embargoes and economic sanctions and all that kind of stuff, all that does is make the people that don't have anything have even less while he craps yeah. in another gold toilet. 
And then I think to my, I, th- I feel safer in the world right now because I, I, I look what what's a terrorist what what what's it do for terrorists now to come pun- take a punch at us now really you want to do that yeah, yeah. We'll come over there and kick your ass and listen here's the other thing too that I'm glad we're talking about in this war that I've never really heard in in uh, wars past is we're actively talking about snuffing the guy out which in the past we'd normally talk around it mm-hmm. you know. We have uh, target acquisitions, and we want to bring him to justice, and all this kind of double talk about snuffing somebody. But we're openly admitting that we want the guy dead, and we've been doing that um, with bin Laden, and I like that. Let's face it. We want to kill the guy. It's fine. Let's uh, speak in those terms. And uh, I do like to see the guys uh, yank down the statue, though, and really go nuts on the statue. (laughs) it's, It's like... Well, uh, see, we put your, uh, Saddam put your brother into a wood chipper, so now you're going to take your Hirachi and beat the crap out of his plaster head. <laughs> that seems like payback. Yeah, sure. I bet Saddam, if he's alive, can feel those. From heaven. You think he's in heaven, Drew? <laughs> you see? Saddam goes to heaven? Think he's in heaven? I, I don't know how... Well, how, how Allah what, works? What the Quran tells, yeah. I don't know. Is, is there a hell there? I think the hell is actually Iraq, Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you die, and uh, you go to uh, heaven. But it can't be our heaven. Their heaven has to be our hell, which is still a step up from uh, where they're living. Okay. All right. So you say Saddam in heaven. I don't know. You, I, I, you don't I, want to go on a, a branch? I'll go to a branch. Go on a limb I'll say, and say purgatory. Purgatory? Not even hell? What's the, it take the, to the, get into hell these days? The, the, I don't know if Islam has... Uh, it must have a hell, yeah? Oh, no. See, once... The uh, and listen, this is uh, true with all the religions. Uh, uh-huh. Be be it, uh, yeah. I, I don't care. I don't care if you're is Islamic or Jewish or whatever you are. Once you die, you find out we're right with our religion, <laughs> and then you meet the devil. I see. And he just uh, he torments you. Oh, that's right. With that's a right. pitchfork. Because they were never. Uh, we got the right religion here. They never took the and, and then, oath of some church. Yeah, and they automatically go to our hell. Right, right, right. Because uh, we're right with our religion. And they get tormented for not uh, believing in uh, Or for not Jesus knowing Christ. that they needed to. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. Right. Ashley? Hi. You're 15? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, not too much. Um, I had a question. First of all, I want to say you guys are freaking awesome. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, a while back, I was given a drug and taken advantage of by a guy. What was the drug? I'm... Not positive. That's what I was calling for. Okay. How, um, do you, how do you know you're given a drug? Well, because he, um, I knew the guy for probably about a day, and um, he went into the kitchen to get me something to drink, and I don't know what happened to me. I basically was paralyzed. I kind of could see and hear everything that's going on, but I couldn't do anything about it. Hmm. Did he didn't you... rape me, but he did force a lot of things on me. Like what? Like oral and manual things. Hmm. That's, that's rape. You don't have to have intercourse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically rape. But perform. Uh, now he forced you to perform oral on him. No, I couldn't move. He did it on you. Yes. We're, but you were awake. Um. Yeah, I was kind of in and out. In and out. This guy sounds like a retarded criminal. To me. It's like yeah. I'm going to paralyze my victim so I can go down on him. When you when you were out, what were you asleep? What kind of strategy is that? When you were out, were you asleep? I was not. No, she could see. She just uh, couldn't well, she feel she anything. Internet, she's describing things very strangely. Had you ever been severely traumatized when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sound like you were dissociating, that you were not on drugs. What did he get you to drink? No, no, I'm not sure that happened. I know, I'm just curious. So maybe um, it was a fifth of a uh, chance. No, it actually was just, like, I'm pretty sure it was just some kind of lemonade. Yeah. I would be suspicious. How old is this guy? He was actually 19. 19. Is he a smart guy? Obviously not. <laughs> well, I, what I mean is... is uh, I don't know. I didn't know him. You didn't know him? I did not know him. Hold on. Let me talk to Drew for a second. Yeah. Okay, Drew, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. You're thinking that she was a victim in the past, and this guy began to victimize and her. And she froze. And she dissociated the, yeah, and kind froze. of froze up. Which, which is a real common thing for victims. Right, and, and she and made it me over the, f- feels as if you're paralyzed. It's like it's like an out of body experience. That's what they have. Right, and, but there are no drugs that will do that. Really, you you're either in or you're out with drugs. You're 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 out of it, and you kind of come to, and somebody might be doing something to you, and then you're asleep. 
Mm-hmm. You don't you don't sort of feel out of body. I mean, ketamine can do that, make you feel sort of out of body. But even then, not reliably enough that somebody would give you that in order to use it as a date rape mm-hmm. drug. Can you give me some of that? Yeah. Okay. Pharmacy never called me today, by the way. Ashley, hmm? I got my I scored. Right. That's cool. Ashley, mm-hmm. what happened to you in the past? Oh, it's a never-ending list. Um, when I was from the ages of three to seven, just about every day I was molested by right. my brother. That's that's all you need to know. Okay. That, that's enough to send you into these fugue states <laughs> when somebody starts victimizing you. Well, so then I guess the question is: is we'd like to call the guy a rapist. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's any way to prove that he drugged you. Mm-hmm. And we're not so sure he drugged you uh, based on your history mm-hmm. and your ability to sort of freeze up in these situations and dissociate. Right. Mm-hmm. So m- m- on the other hand, he is a, he, you know, he's an adult and you're a minor, so it seems like there's something there. How long ago did this happen? Probably it was at the end of August, last August. Were you 14 then? Yeah. Mm. And he, he was 19 still? Yes. But you didn't call the cops, did you? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been, well, see, the thing is, I really don't, from, uh, let me see, just about a year ago, um, my dad's always been abusive. Right. And um, a year ago, I came to visit him. I, had, I hadn't seen him for about six years. Yeah. And he wanted to see me for a weekend, and... Um, Basically, to wrap it all up, um, I came home to the hospital. He tried to kill me and left me out in the middle of the desert. Ashley, your dad tried to kill you. Yes. Ashley, do, do you have you? They ever thought you maybe had a multiple personality disorder? What do you mean? Anybody ever said? Do you ever go into, you know, find things you be bought? You don't remember True. buying. Maybe you're not talking to the personality yeah. that got diagnosed with the multiple personality okay. disorder. Ever think about that? Did you ever, you ever do things where you come home and things were purchased? You don't remember buying them, that kind of thing? No. That's how did how'd your dad try to kill you and leave you in the middle of the desert? Well, I came to visit him, and um, we were in a hotel. He's always had an anger problems. Um, it was weird enough that he brought me somewhere that was seven hours away from his house. And um, Well, how did he try to kill you? Oh, he just beat the crap out of me. And... He beat the crap out of you, like... And like, he left, was strangling me, like, I I could not... My body was done. Left you for dead in the desert? Yeah, yeah basically. And what happened? Um, I... A Greyhound bus came, and I took it home. You didn't report this? Oh, yeah. Okay. You did? Yeah. And what happened to him? Um, he's actually probably sitting at home right now. I see. He didn't, uh... He didn't get prosecuted for trying to kill his daughter? The trial's not over yet. He, did, he used to hang out at home for attempted murder? Yeah. <laughs> it's the, I don't like the judicial system. It's I really don't like dealing with police because my entire life they've just screwed me over. Okay, hold on. Let me talk to you again. Okay, so this, um, Ash has got some serious issues. But even reality is not fitting together right. Yeah, she was she was raped, but the guy didn't. Didn't ra- didn't drug her. Didn't but, drug her, but she was attempted. Her dad attempted to murder her and leave her in the desert. But, he's but then sitting she home. just she got up and got on a bus, and then he's sitting at home. Now I'm not questioning Ashley in terms of these guys being world class a holes or criminals, but it probably didn't go down exactly how she's describing it to us. Either way, she's been through uh, a ton, of, been been to hell and back. Uh, Ashley, mm-hmm. how about uh, some therapy? You're telling me to go get therapy? Yeah, I am. How dare you, Adam? Yeah, I know. What <laughs> makes you think that that would be of any use to somebody? Listen, like I told him my dad missed a handful of Pop Warner football games. I'm still in therapy. Your, da- your dad tried to kill you, and your brother was raping you your whole life. You need therapy. Yeah. How about it? Um, I'm actually in therapy. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I've you- been in counseling for a while. All okay. Right, All right, so here's the advice. You ready? I'm a genius, right? Uh, yep. Okay. So you got to listen to me. Okay. Everybody listen to me. Okay. You you need to not get pregnant. You need to be very careful about the guys you choose to hang around with. You will have more of these sort of... um, Them giving you the Jim Jones Kool-Aid and then going down on you. And by the way, where are all the broads who are giving me uh, the iced tea and trying to blow me? (laughs) What happened to them? Where, where, Where was I in high school when this stuff was going down? 
<laughs> Never happened once. I don't think women do that, interesting. Ah, maybe you're right. Very okay, sexist. So, Ashley, watch out for guys. Don't get pregnant. Uh, don't go visit your dad anymore. And uh, therapy, therapy, and more therapy, all right? Uh, thank you. All right, and don't get in all chaotic relationships and everything, all right? Oh, I'll try and stay away don't from that. Don't do any mm -hmm. crazy threesomes or make any porn films, all right? Okay, thanks. You guys and, are awesome. Unless you're hot. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. God. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you. You take these kids, you scramble their brain like a broken yolk, and then uh, expect them to go through life without omelet head. But it, <laughs> yes, but it's interesting. You wonder what the real experiences were that she had with her dad and with this guy. I really wonder what actually, if he had a video camera, what happened. I would reckon right. that um, her dad's probably a prick. Uh, she's got a lot of weird and crazy energy. They probably got into it. They probably, you know, started slapping and yeah. shaking yeah. her and, you know, and she's scratching him and yeah. whatever. And he told her to get out of the car. Yeah. And uh, drove home. Yeah. I would say that's probably the way that went down. Yeah. And then, and then the, the other guy was probably just a oh, guy, guy making out. And all of a sudden she's available. And I thought, yeah, he gave my uh, for the price and of a uh, glass of uh, old time uh, lemonade I scored. The guy just thought he was operating. Yeah, that's all. And the reason, look, if you're going to drug somebody, they're going to rape him. Yeah, hump him. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the first thing my dad told me when I was going off to college. His son, if you're going to give someone a roofie, you hump. I remember that very clearly. You don't give someone a roofie and then go down on them. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen. That's the most retarded strategy ever. Well, heard. that is a retarded. The, a guy going down on him is to get a sexual response. You ain't going to get it if somebody's asleep. Yeah, so this guy gave her the uh, drink and then slid down there. He thought he was just uh, a smooth operator. Yeah, yeah. Oh, true, we got to move to Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I'm talking tonight. Oh, okay. Forget about the family. It's just you and me. It's me and you, buddy. buddy. Yeah. We hop into my car. Mm. The Z. Sh swing by the ATM. We swing it out. <laughs> I got like a $250 limit, my ATM. Oh, yeah. Swing by yours. Tap that thing out gas up the Z. Just go. And we just start driving down the coast, buddy. You know what? We hit the Canadian border. Let's just go the other way. Let's go to Vegas. No, no, no. We got to get out of the country. Really? It'll be, it'll be, they can track you down there. Yeah. You send some uh, money orders home to the old lady. She sees, she's fit that the kids are taken care of. We set up shop there. Hmm. Get a little job. I do a thing where I do, uh, uh, do like uh, salmon fishing expeditions. Ooh. Get a little pontoon plane. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You sit back in the cabin, you you, you fry up the fish. I'll it's do, a good, it's a good do, life. Uh, it's a good life. Barber and surgeon. Let's talk about this. All right. All right we'll be back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Forget about that phone number. We don't need your stinking calls. We got a little bit of show to go. But this is where I really hit my stride, Drew. Fantastic. Listen to this. Angelina? Yes. You're 31? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, what's up? Oh, um, my 12-year-old daughter told me today that she lost her virginity. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been worried about this because she's been hanging out with this really bad kid. He's 13. He does drugs. His parents do drugs. Mm-hmm. She's smoked pot with him. She, I know that she's um, given him oral sex a few times, and I've talked to her about this, um, told her the dangers of, of sex, and today she didn't come home till 8 o'clock, and when she came home, it came out that she she had sex with him. And Why, then, uh, how did it come out? Yeah. Did she tell you? Well, I, she said that she forgot what time it was, um, and I was like... You were either stoned or you had sex. There's no way you forgot what time it was. You're lying. Mm -hmm. And she went over to a neighbor's house. Or she denied it and was yelling and screaming. And she went over to a neighbor's house and came back and yeah. was crying and said she wanted to hug and then told me what happened. How do you know about the uh, oral sex before this? Um, I, <laughs> I tricked her. Yeah. I went online in one of her little chatting sessions. Mm-hmm. And you pretended uh, to be somebody? Yeah. Fantastic. Nice. And uh, now what uh, what grade is she in? She's in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, dad's not around. 
No, and I know she's starving for male attention. And what did she do for contraception today? Um, she said she used a condom. Mm, you still might. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe when you get that morning after pill going for her, or at least get her on some birth control, right? Well, that would be priority one. I don't think she wants to uh, get her twelve-year-old on birth control. Yeah, though. but she's but she, she's out of control, right? I mean, this, this is priority one here. This is damage control at this point. And uh, where's where's dad living in Florida? He's never been in the picture. He's in, in Florida. In Florida. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere around Florida. Where is he, dad? He's in another state. What state? Why does that matter? He's in he's in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. That oh, that's second. That's second. Yeah. That's number two. Yeah. Florida's number one, Nevada number two on the uh, scumball uh, ass rolling how, downhill. Scale. How old were you when you lost your virginity? Uh, Sixteen. Were you abused sexually before that or something? Um, I was when I was really young. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. And uh, and so Dad basically has never been in the picture. She she talked about him or wanted to contact him. Uh, she wants me to get child support from him so she can have money to buy clothes, but she's not interested in meeting him. Is there uh, any other uh, new guys in the picture for you? Yes. What happened with that? Um, uh, actually, he came over last weekend. But uh, did she ever, did your daughter have a stepdad? Oh, um, she did for a while, and... I divorced him, and he refused to talk to her after that. He changed his phone number. He told his family not to talk to her. It was pretty cruel. And how'd that go with him and her? Did they get along well? Uh, actually, they did. They did? Mm-hmm. And she then... called him dad. Uh, she was really young. She was three when I got married. Okay. Right. You and your daughter need to get some conjoint work, some therapy together. <sighs> and because this, uh... there's some real serious boundary problems here. And yeah. the, they you, and you you can't set limits on her. You can't control her behavior. You intrude on her, but then when it comes to really setting down and asserting things that you need to do, you're you're powerless. So you need to get in and get some help with this because this is not a good situation. No, I know. This this is the exact exact opposite combination. As opposed to you being the parent and being able to contain her behaviors, you're having to sort of drop down to peer level and and go on. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, Why'd you divorce the stepdad? Um, he he became abusive. Right. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. So. But, but you know what? Yeah. After that, I haven't I haven't dated any abusive men. I've dated very nice. Okay. Kind of men. So you're you're coming out of your thing. And you don't want her to go through what you went through. Exactly. All right. So uh, my heart goes out to you, but unfortunately, you got your work cut out for you, and you got to get that therapy with her. Yeah, you got to do that. I've, well, she you know she talks to a therapist at school, and the therapist pulls me aside and says this kid's really dangerous, but. To her, you know, she's had another therapist. They don't, they don't get tough with her. Wait, Angelina, they pulled you aside and said your daughter is in, is in dangerous shape. Well, this this kid that she's enamored with is dangerous. I see. I All see. right. Well, maybe they got to do therapy together. They need to in the worst way. Uh, that's that's why I'm and saying. Listen, this is this is what happens every time. You make a bad decision. You get okay. No, I'm going to take it back further. You get abused growing up, so you hook up with some abusive a-hole because that's who you're magically attracted to. Then you get pregnant by the abusive a-hole. Then magically the abusive a-hole leaves. Then you're left to single-handedly raise your daughter. Meanwhile, your daughter takes all her anger, frustration, and hurt out on you yeah, the entire about time. About the dad. But plus, you're a trauma survivor and can't set adequate boundaries with the daughter, and now you've got a mess. Okay. So you got to get some therapy. you got to do the work. Sorry. Conjoint there. There's the two of you together so that you can be coached on how to manage her. Lynn? Yeah. What's up? You're 22. Um, yeah, I just had a question about uh, anal sex. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I've been, like, having anal sex for, like, five years or so. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. around there. Nonstop? And, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ahead. Stopping for meals. I see. Yeah, like, off and on. Yeah. My boyfriend really likes it, so. Okay. Um, and the question? Um, like, lately, like, the last month and a half, two months or so, I've been noticing blood, like... Perfectly normal. Perfectly I'm, healthy. You, you're <laughs> noticing uh, blood, like, uh, in your stool? Yeah. Bad and times. what's your question? Why, I mean, should, like, is that tricked out, or is there something... No, why would... Uh, fantasy answer. <laughs> well, why would you have uh, bleeding massively from the rectum? Well, just, uh... <laughs> You just start, start uh, marathon running at that point, I'd say. Oh, uh, true, uh, please. Uh, extreme right. exercise. Well, listen, you, you figure uh, this is from the anal sex, right? 
Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Or is it like an ulcer or something? It's not an ulcer. Whatever it is, it's actually an emergency because rectal bleeding can become brisk and it can be uh, dangerous. So whether it's a fissure or a hemorrhoid or actually have some colitis or a polyp or God knows what up there, whether it is or is not related to the anal sac, I think we can surmise it is, it's something that categorically needs to be checked out immediately. Okay. All right? And uh, you may want to lay off the uh, anus for a couple In the meantime, of, yeah. In, in spite of, of your yeah, boyfriend's I, I enamored, you know, the, the well, enamored... Uh, do you like it too, Lynn? Um, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes oh, but you had, you've been engaging in it for five years. <laughs> What's up? I don't, I don't do it if I don't want to. Yeah, okay. but you don't really, you're not really into it. It's only sometimes enjoyable to you. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. Get it checked out. Please take care of yourself. All right. At the very least, get get on some iron in the meantime because you're going to be iron deficient. For and listen, moment. ladies, all of you out there, do not do anything you don't want to do unless I ask you to do it. All right. That goes for uh, all ladies. That goes for uh, uh, that goes for my mom down uh, down to newborns. Okay, buddy. And it's not all going to be sexual. The, the, the line sheriff, it will be. But some will just be basic tasks, you know, freshen up the coffee, turn down the bed, that kind of thing. Nice. All right? It's a good life. Right. But the, the bulk of it will be anal requests. No, no doubt. We'll be back. Well, there's the show, everybody. I want to thank Paul Tracy, a race car driver, for coming out here tonight. It's going to be at the uh, Toyota Grand Prix this weekend in Long Beach. And uh, tomorrow night, possibly possibly Josh Rowland will come in here. He is also going to be driving in the uh, celebrity race. So we'll see about that. I want to thank uh, everyone who uh, should be thanked. And until next time, this is Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Well, you did overdose. That's why you hallucinate. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to overdose to get high, but not to, like, over-overdose. And... This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.